Okay. So first of all, NOAA is a US government department and it stands for National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And they have been taking long term measurements of a lot of important compounds in the atmosphere for over four decades. And all of this data is publicly available on this website. And I'm going to be looking at some of this data in this video. So I'm going to be selecting carbon dioxide. Then I'm going to be selecting flask. Then I'm going to select monthly averages. Then I'm going to scroll down here until I find Mauna Loa. And Mauna Loa is a measurement site in Hawaii. And I'm going to click here to open up the data. And then all of this at the top is all comments that come with the data. And then this is the data itself. So I'm going to press Control A, select all of this. Then I'm going to press Control C to copy it. Then I'm going to open up an Excel spreadsheet and Control V to paste. Now I'm going to delete all of the comments at the top because I'm not interested in those. Then I'm going to select column A and I'm going to go to data and text two columns and delimit and then next and space and then next and finish to put them all in separate cells. Then I'm going to delete these two cells and move the headings along so that they match up. So this is the site and it is Mauna Loa and all of the sites are represented by a three letter code. So this is obviously MLO and then of course there is the year and the month and then the value which in this case is CO2 and it's in parts per million. Now the first thing that I need to do is add the year and the month together so I can plot the data. And there's a couple of different ways that I can do this. I can select the year and then add the month minus 0 0.5 divided by 12. And this will give me the year. And then the month will be represented by the numbers after the decimal point. And I can also do this by using the date formula and selecting the year and then the month. And then because these are monthly averages, I will make the day 15. And I will just double click on that as well. And I can give these headings and the headings don't really matter. Now I've got that. I can select this column and then go back up to the top and hold down control and select all of this column. And then I can insert a scatter plot. And this is carbon dioxide concentrations at Mauna Loa. And I am just going to change this to format it really quickly. And now this looks a bit clearer. So this is increasing carbon dioxide concentrations over time. They started making measurements in 1969 and then there was a gap and then they restarted making measurements in 1976. And you can see it's been increasing ever since. You can also see this continuous wave all the way through the data. And that is the seasonal cycle. And I can add a very simple trend line to this. And then if I select the trend line and press Control 1 and then go to display equation and R squared, I can then see the equation. So this tells me that on average, carbon dioxide concentrations have increased by 1.7 parts per million each year since all the measurements started being collected. And the R squared also tells me I can be very confident in this data as it is 0 0.98, which is like saying I can be 98% certain that this is a real trend. Now you can work out how much is increasing in another way by selecting this number and then the very top number 
and then also selecting the year and then this year so this is how much it's increased by and this is over how many years so if I do this divided by this it will tell me on average how much it has increased by per year so 1.7 parts per million it's slightly different from this number here because this number is being calculated using the trend line so the small dots going from here to this dot here whereas this number is being calculated by going from this dot here to this dot here so it is slightly different now if i select somewhere in the table and go control A and then go insert and pivot table. I can make a pivot table using this data and look at some other features. For example, if I put year in here and then CO2 in here and I change this to average, I can see the average CO2 concentrations for each year. Now, if I try selecting all of this and going to insert and scatter plot, it won't let me plot it because pivot tables won't let you select uh, scatter plots. So instead, I need to select it and copy it and then just paste it as values. And then I need to make sure to get rid of the grand total at the bottom. And then I can select all of this and this time I will be able to plot it. And this is just showing me the increasing trend with the seasonal cycle removed. Now I can also, if I want, do this year minus this year, and then it will show me how much is increasing each year. And then if I select these values instead, now I'm also going to delete this number here because it is the increase over six years is not what I'm looking for. So from this plot, you can see that there is a lot of variation in how much CO2 concentrations increase over each year. Uh, people who are a lot smarter than me do a lot more sophisticated analysis on this sort of data to try and work out what's causing these variations and if there's been any trend in them over time. Uh, you can see some simple things in here. For example, uh, 1992 and 1993, these two years were very low because in 1991, there was a volcanic eruption that had knock-on effects for the whole of the terrestrial biosphere for the next couple of years. Now, if I go back to this sheet and go back down to the plot at the bottom, I can have a look at some of this data to look at the seasonal cycle in a bit more detail. So I will change this now to 2000, right at the beginning of the year 2000 and go all the way to the beginning of 2011. So I'll see a whole decade and I will delete the trend line and then zoom in on the axes so I can see it in a bit more detail. And I will make this 395 and now we can see it a bit more clearly. So you can see here, it is very low at its minimum in September, and then the carbon dioxide concentrations increase until we get to May, and then they start decreasing again until we get to September again, and then the cycle starts over. And this is caused by the terrestrial biosphere. In uh, September, October time is autumn and winter, and the leaves fall off of the trees and the plants start to die and then the microbes through respiration cause decomposition which releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and that happens all through the autumn and winter until we get to May and that is when spring starts again and the trees grow leaves and the plants start to grow and there is photosynthesis that takes in carbon dioxide and causes carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere to decrease. And that continues again until we get to September. 
Now, if I go back to this sheet, I can edit the pivot table to look at some other details. Now, if I change this to the maximum value and then add in another copy of this and change it to the minimum value, I can then select the, all of this and copy it and go back to the previous sheet and then paste it as values. And I want to look at what the maximum concentration is and in which month that occurs in each year and then also look to find out when the minimum concentration occurs in each year. So I am going to select this column and hold down shift and then move it along and then I can use a VLOOKUP formula. So I'm looking for this value and I'm looking for it in this table and I need to press F4 so these values don't move around and then I'm looking for column 2 and I want an exact match. Then I'm going to add in a text formula around this so I can see the month. And in order to get the month, I need four M's in quotation marks. So now you can see I have December here. And if I click and drag, you can see it is now finding me the minimum value. And then I can double click these to fill in the rest of the table. And this is showing me in each year, in which month does the maximum concentration occur and in which year does the minimum in which month in each year does the minimum concentration occur now I'm going to delete these top three values because I don't have complete years for either this year or this year so I'm just going to get rid of those and then you can quite clearly see that in almost every single year May is the month with the highest concentration and September is the month with the lowest concentration. And I will also delete the grand totals here. Now I can count these out if I want it to by using the count if formula and selecting this range. And then by typing May in quotation marks. And you can see that there are 36 years in which the maximum CO2 concentration occurs in May. Now, if I just highlight all of these again, it will show me the count down here. So I have 40 years worth of data here. So you can see there's only four years in which the month isn't May. And in those cases, it is April or June. So one month before or one month afterwards. Then if I click and drag this and change this to September, you can see that in 37 out of 40 years, the minimum concentration in CO2 occurs in September. So from this analysis, we can see that a, the seasonal cycle, the timing of it is very consistent. It doesn't vary very much. Over the last 40 years, it has stayed pretty much the same. Although, of course, the timing of the seasonal cycle would be different if you were looking at different locations. Okay, and that is it.